All right, guys, welcome back to Ranger Survival and Fieldcraft. And what I have for you today is going commando. 10 commando survival skills in 10 minutes. Stand by. We're going to do another combat water survival skill. And for this skill, all we're going to need is our pants. And we're going to turn our pants into a flotation device. Simply tie the leggings at the bottom of the pant leg to close off the legs and then zip the fly, button the waist or button the fly and button the waist to create one single piece of fabric. And then when we're in the water, all we have to do is take our pants, swing them over our head in an attempt to catch air, and then trap that air inside the pant legs to act as a flotation device. Once we have enough air, we can simply swim with those pants to keep ourselves afloat, saving energy and await rescue. If we start to lose some air, all we have to do is begin treading water again and throw our pants over our head to attempt to capture more air. This technique is great because we can do it while in the water, treading water, and then have a flotation device, or we can do it out of the water. In 1995, Lance Corporal Zachary Mayo used this technique when he went overboard of the USS America in the Arabian Sea, and he lasted 36 hours adrift in the Arabian Sea until he was eventually rescued. Now there are a lot of different methods out there to create improvised water containers out in the field. We just simply have to be smart and use what's available. One method we can use is our rain pants. We can turn our leggings of our rain pants into water bladders that can carry a gallon or more of water in each leg. That's huge for survival. All we have to do, cut off the legs, S-fold the end that we cut, and then applying zip ties or 550 cord, whatever cordage we have available, secure those ends, and then with a little bit more 550 cord or anything that's available, we can create a simple yoke to carry these water bladders out of the field. We then turn the leggings inside out, fill them with as much water as we can, and then using arbor knots on our yoke or our saddle, secure the open ends to tie them shut and keep the water inside, and then attach both bladders to our yoke. Simply put that over our head and around our neck, and we have a way to carry water out in the field. Of note, both of these bladders contain more than 30 pounds of water. That's huge for survival. Now that we have all this water from the pond in our improvised water bladders made out of our rain pants, we're gonna need a way to purify it. And fire is gonna be that method. We also want to conceal our fire, and so we're going to dig a Dakota fire pit underneath the canopy of some large trees to help dissipate some of the smoke from our fire. We dig our pit, and then we collect our materials for our fire, which shouldn't take much. And to get our fire going, we can use just a common field dressing, an old school field dressing, because all it is is just a bunch of sheets of cotton inside that material. 100% cotton we can take out, and then using our face paint, which is made of paraffin wax and other materials, we can use that face paint to act as a flame extender to keep that cotton lit for a lot longer to help get our fire going. All we do is take out some of the cotton, apply that face paint, and then ignite our tinder with our ferro rod, and we have fire, and now we can boil our water in our canteen cup over that fire to make it safe to drink. Sleep is incredibly important in survival, getting a good night's rest. And we can improvise a hammock to get up off the ground with some nylon webbing from our mountaineering kit and then our poncho. We just take one corner of our poncho, fold it in on itself, and then fold it over, creating a bite. We find the middle of our nylon webbing and begin wrapping, starting at that fold and working toward the grommet or center of our poncho. Once we get about halfway, we take the tag end of our poncho with the grommet, fold it over top of our wrapped nylon webbing, and then wrap over top of that back toward the bite we created. Once we get to that bite, we just feed both opposite ends of our nylon webbing through that bite or the hole we created or the fold. We do this twice and then we have one side complete. Repeat on the diagonal opposite corner and then we have our hammock constructed. Now all we have to do is hang that from the tree, making sure we have secure knots and enough space and then we can safely rotate into our hammock and get some sleep in an improvised commando hammock. Now one skill set that can't be overlooked is the ability to improvise weapons, not only for hunting game in survival, but also for defense and for attack. One of those weapons that we can create is the simple garrot. 
All it is is two toggles and a bit of cordage. We can use anything, but in this case, we're gonna use Kevlar cordage because it's strong and we carry it in our survival tin. All we have to do is get two toggles and then attach some of our Kevlar cordage to these two toggles to create a simple Garant for surprise attacks. To demonstrate the effectiveness of this weapon, we've got a melon. We're gonna take our Garant, put it around our melon as if it was an enemy's neck, and then simply use the Garant to slice through that melon and finish the job. And there you go. And now we also have a little bit of lunch. Another improvised weapon that we can make when we're out in the field, especially for survival, using just a simple cloth, or in this case, a cravat from our medical kit, is something called a blackjack or a sling bob. All we have to do is lay out our cravat flat on the ground and then place a good sized rock center mass of our cravat. Fold the top of the cravat down over the rock and then roll the rock with the material until we reach the end. Tie off both ends and we have a simple sling bob or blackjack that we can use for offense or defense. Or in this case, smashing the head of our enemy or a melon to demonstrate the effectiveness of this weapon. Now, speaking of commando, commando saws and wire saws get a bad rap because they are relatively cheap and easy to break, but that's usually because people don't know how to use them correctly to make them last a little bit longer in the field. We can take our commando saw from our survival tin and then using our survival knife harvest materials to create a traditional bushcraft bucksaw frame. We add the wire in the split ends of our saw, secure the wire in place with parachute cord, or in this case, zip ties, and then adding our cross section and then parachute cord at the top with our windlass. We spin that windlass to add tension and hold the entire bucksaw frame together, and then we're ready to saw larger materials with our wire saw. We can saw large sections a few inches in diameter. We just have to be careful and go slow. The commando saw is still a viable option for a survival tool if you know how to use it. The grappling hook and commando rope used to be standard issue for a lot of infantry squads and especially engineers to use to breach line wire obstacles. The battle drill, one soldier would run up with the commando rope and grappling hook attached ready to go and throw it over a line wire obstacle while under fire. Another soldier would climb up or crawl up to that soldier. The soldier with the rope would pull on it, drag the line wire obstacle toward him. Then the other soldier would have wire cutters together. Those two soldiers would cut the wire and allow friendly forces to breach an enemy's defensive wire obstacle. But here we can use that same rope and grappling hook to get on top of a hill where there's no way to climb up it safely. You can just simply attach the grappling hook, use wireman knots, every couple of feet as handholds and then throw the grappling hook up to the top of the hill. Once it attaches, we simply climb up onto the opposite side and we're on top of the hill. Too easy. With all the scummy, nasty water in the area, it's a good idea to pre-filter that water before boiling it to help treat it and make it safe to drink. We can improvise a commando sock or a filter using one of our socks, preferably a clean sock. Take that sock out and then using coals from a previous fire, we put coals inside the sock at the bottom to create a layer about three or four inches. And then we collect moss from around the area. Moss acts as a natural filter, but then it has antimicrobial properties that will help treat that water as we filter it, plus removing any of the sediment or debris in the water. We begin collecting that water with our canteen cup and then pouring that water through our filter. We continue to collect that water and then pour it back through the filter, continuing to filter that water until the water is clear. Once that water is clear, we can take it to our fire, bring it to a boil, and it'll be safe to drink. Another way to get water, especially in the hot months in my local area, is water vines. We can use our military cravat to actually collect this water for us into our canteen cup. We locate that water vine, taking out our utility knife, scrape away the bark, and carve a small notch in the water vine. We then take our military cravat from our medical kit, wrap it around the wound we created in the water vine so that the tapered ends are facing down toward the ground, and then simply wait 
pour the water to collect and start dripping, place our canteen cup underneath our cravat and collect that water. Although a slow process, that water is completely safe to drink, no need to purify. All right guys, that was 10 commando survival skills in 10 minutes. If you like this video, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, leave me a comment in the comment section. I always appreciate your feedback. I wanna thank you guys for everything you do for me, for this channel, for your likes, your views, your subscriptions, your comments, your feedback, and your shares. And I'll be back with another awesome video as soon as I can, guys. Thanks.